Alrighty, good morning. I am waking up and like, Lord, let's have fun today. Let's have a blast. This is the day that you made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I think today would be a good day for my husband and I to have a dance party. I hope that I don't jiggle too much and shake this camera off. I need one of those little selfie stands. Anyway, we've been just reading the word and I don't read it before I'm reading this so I don't know what I'm going to talk about so let's just trust Holy Spirit's gonna just invigorate us. So we're in the gospel, uh, First John, the love book. I think this is the book that speaks um, about, the, it says the word love like more than any other book maybe I think so but we call this the love book um, yeah so it's written by John and I read chapter 1 yesterday and I want to get into chapter 2 and we finished with if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us and I mentioned, I see sin as um, unbelief. That's really what sin is. Because if you boil down anything that really causes you to want to sin or, or even think about it is just the question. Um, for instance, like we can use a, 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 an outer thing like smoking or drinking or, you know, pills. Why? Why overeat? Why are we doing these things? It's a way deeper thing. Do we really believe that God loves me? Do we really? Do I really believe that He's um, He fulfills me? He cares about me. He satisfies me. Because when we try to get satisfaction or relief from satisfaction, scrolling through Facebook or whatever, we're trying to be like comforted or at peace for a little while well, before I need to share my testimony one of these days and I will it's just it's a pretty special thing just trying to get it all out but when I was first just really coming back to the Lord when I was younger early 20s um, I was so far removed from who I was as a daughter that I was busier than anybody I know. I was packed out my day. I'd have five, six jobs, odd end jobs. I'd play soccer, you know, hours a day. I needed to stay busy because when I stopped, I had to like deal with my own self and my mind and I just didn't think that I was very worthy. I didn't really like myself. And so I wanted to fulfill it in other ways because I didn't really know how much he loved me. I was in unbelief of how wonderful I was and how special I was how chosen I was that all these other things that I thought that I was that would beat me up in my mind was not the truth so chapter 2 my little children these things write I unto you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. 
That was the message we read yesterday, that this is the message which we've heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. And here he's saying, again, a new commandment I write unto you, that thing which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and walks in darkness, and knows not where he goes, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him, that is, from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. And I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. And we have overcome the wicked one. We have, past tense, have. Verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides for ever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, which we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Mm -hmm. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. What a big chapter. Loaded. Now you've heard it. Like I said, I'm always growing and learning. I don't know everything all the time. But we can tackle a few things and just dig it out. But go in there. Just Sometimes it's so good to read it and hear it yourself. Wash yourself with the word. You don't have to know it all. It's alive. It's getting in your spirit is receiving this. But I just, I, I, there's something I wanted to mention at the beginning. We talked about, yeah, verse 1 says that if we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar. Like, we've all sinned. And I said, because we were all born. Uh, Corinthians talks about, we all came after the first man, Adam, but now we're after the last man, Adam, which is Christ. We were born into Adam, and now we're born again into Christ, awakened to salvation. But it says, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not, and if or unbelieve not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
And he's the propitiation for our sins, not for mine only, but the world. Now, it doesn't say when I sin. It says if. Oh, I've been wanting to do a channel or a video about this. Like, Guys, you can walk free from sin. Haven't you ever had times where you're like, your conscience is so clean. When your conscience is clean, you don't have guilt or shame or condemnation. Like Romans 8, you therefore there have no more condemnation. You're free from sin. Yeah, well, that person's doing this and I wouldn't do that. And that person's doing that and, and that's not right. And I did this and oh, I don't think it's right. Okay, everybody has to walk by their own conscience. But you can walk free from sin by following that conscience. That's the freedom of the Spirit. The law is not on a paper anymore. It's not me telling you what you have to do and can't do. It's you getting born again, getting a Spirit in you that speaks in many ways. And that Spirit is written on your heart and your mind. You have the mind of Christ now to be able to discern the thoughts. Is this Christ? Yes. He's telling me. Mm. Don't eat that third apple pie. Just just stay at one. Two is okay. Three, wow. If you eat three, you really, like, that will be overdoing it for you, Noel. So, I will follow that voice and I don't sin because my conscience is clean. If you sin, if I was like, I'm going to eat that third apple pie. I'm just going to do it. I think it's just, I'm just so loving it. And I eat it and then I'm like, oh, I feel sick. And oh my gosh, Lord, you... I knew that my something in me was saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Now I have a stomach ache. If <clears throat> you sin, if you unbelieve that you heard his voice, if you don't believe that he, it was sufficient at one or two, you have an advocate. Thank God. Repent. Change your mind and be like, I really wish I hadn't done that, Lord. Forgive me, please. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. And you change if you sin, not when you sin, if you sin. You can walk in this. There's times where I believe I'm walking the way I'm as pure and right as I know. I went to Japan. I thought everything I did was, Lord, I'm doing my best to follow you. Um, and some things were troublesome or hard and you're, you're starting to question or doubt. Did I really hear you? Did I do this right? My heart's so pure that I'm like, if I messed up, I'm not trying to. I was with a girl this recently, and uh, I think she kind of had more of a, a religious background. And I, I used to think the same way, but I was just talking to her. I didn't know if it was touching her heart or not. She was very blank. But as I'm speaking, tear, tear, tear just starts pouring down her face, just a stoic face. And I was just telling her she had quit her job and decided to do a mission trip to go to Mexico. And I'm like, yes. I said, I was so afraid for so many years to step out and do something. Because if it wasn't God's perfect will, what if I didn't fully follow him rightly? I was so scared and nervous to, to step and do anything. Because I thought he might be mad at me or it's wrong or it's not perfect. My own father doesn't even treat me like that. How much more God? So when I realized, I was telling her like I did, your heart's pure. You're so after God with all you know. You're, you're going to love people. You're, you, you're giving up everything. You're going by faith. And he absolutely is so pumped. Maybe you find out that in the end you don't enjoy being there or you find out you want to be a... A veterinarian somewhere else or something I like you can't mess up when your heart is pure before him you're seeking him with all your heart soul mind and strength you can't go wrong oh my goodness when that started to hit me that I can't really mess up because I'm not trying to it's not sin it's faith and he loves faith it's faith that pleases the father he's a good father if you step in the wrong direction, not on purpose, he can correct it. But if you never step and you're questioning and wondering, you're never going to go anywhere. And you're never going to hear his voice keep guiding you. So that's, there's more behind that. There's three ways in this New Testament, 
And the way he now speaks us that it says you can sin. We can talk about that later. Oh, but he's just so sweet. And he um, says, like, my goodness. Uh, he that says he loves God, uh, I know him and I keep his... He that says he knows him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. You notice how it says that he's not a sinner? It says he's a liar. So if I say I know God and I don't keep his commandments, I don't love God and I don't love people. Oh, I love God. I keep his commandments. But I start treating my my dad really harshly. Or I, I'm talking back to him. Or I'm arguing. Then I'm a liar. And the truth is not in me. I wouldn't even say that I'm a liar. The truth is not it's not being formed. I'm not recognizing that I am not one to argue. I'm a peacekeeper. I'm a peacemaker. My dad is my my brother in Christ now and forever. I'm going to treat him like that. Not like a dad, like an earthly father. I want to love him. And I want to honor him and serve him. If I'm doing the opposite, I'm taking from him. I'm, I'm arguing. I'm making myself a liar because the truth the very truth of me, that's not my nature. That's not your character. You're a peacemaker. And it's just, it's just like recognizing you're going against the truth. Romans talks about how we were once slaves to sin. Slaves, like a dog can't help but bark, right? And chase squirrels, at least mine does. A dog is its nature is to do this. All right, it's a slave to it. It can't know any other way. Um, my dog, if I lay down a bone or some food on the floor, and I'll be like, "Love, you don't eat that. Don't eat that. No." And then I leave the room. I come back. It's eaten, right? Yes, right. So a slave to it. It's just its nature. But then it says, you now have become a slave to righteousness. A slave. You can't help but be a slave to righteousness. Being right with God. It's, it's, to go against it would make you a liar. To go against it would be fighting the truth. The opposite, it's like, then you become a cat. I know this is really weird examples, but I'm just trying to make it opposites. Uh, my dad's cat, I left some food on the counter. They, she she knows she can't be up there. They squirt water at her if she gets up there and yells at her. And so she, she knows she's not supposed to. But I left some food up there. I think it was even fish. <laughs> and I didn't think about her. I left, come back. She's on the counter eating the fish. And I'm yelling and squirting her. And I'm like, that's her nature. That's her slavehood to her nature. So I can be as mad as I want at her and call her a bad cat or you're, you're doing evil. Not going to change much. It's maybe just temporarily harness her. But her nature, your nature now is you were, you were a dog that barked and now you are literally a whole new creation. I'm a whole new creature. I'm a cat that eats fish. <laughs> this is getting really weird, but that's where I'm, I just, I love that, that truth. I'm a slave to righteousness. Gosh, he's, he's like, this is where I belong. This is where you belong. What else do we have here? Man, these commandments are for you, um... The true light now shines. I don't always understand what, what he means when he's like, talks to the fathers, then he talks to the young men, then he talks to children, he talks to fathers and the young men and children. I have a feeling that in a way, it, it's to me it's different places that we know him. Not like a literal old father or a literal child. But you were once as a child, you spoke as a child, then you grew up in this and that. And I feel like he says that if we were in him from the foundation of the world, I literally have been with Jesus in the beginning. For you, in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. 
Christ. All things are made by him. It says, you have been called and ordained and planned from the foundation of the world. You're in him. I know him from the beginning. So you could take when he's talking about you were in him from the beginning, you know him from the beginning. Yeah, you could know him from when you first heard his the word about Jesus, or you could know him from when you they first literally met him. But I feel like the more I get to know God, he's literally taking me back to the, to the beginning. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, a beginning of the world. Guys, if we are in Christ, and he was there at the beginning of the world, before the world was, and he created all things, and now you're in Christ, in the spirit there's no space or time. Would not, not, not you be in him in the beginning? Which means if all things are created by him and for him, all things are created by you and for you. Because he also talks about later about the Holy Spirit, which is, I believe it's the anointing. The anointing has come. And he teaches you. He calls you the, the advocate, the teacher, the spirit of truth. He's come to teach you. And you know all things. You may not think you know all things, but you have the capacity. If everything was created by you and for you, and the spirit of wisdom, which is Christ, is in you, he's been made unto us wisdom, I believe you have access to all the wisdom, all the knowledge, to know all things. It's just pulling it out and being taught. Like, you do have this capacity. It's within me from the beginning. Guys, I know it's getting kind of deep, but it's exciting. It's exciting to believe we have the ability to actually walk as manifested sons of God. So good. Oh, and uh, people talk about Antichrist and stuff. We don't have, I don't need to get into all that too much, but he basically says, you know what an Antichrist is? He that denies that Jesus is the Christ. And before that, he's saying they were of us, but then they left because they really weren't of us. They're denying that Jesus is the Christ. That could be taken in so many levels. I could even see it as somebody who says they believe and walking in it, but they're making excuses and really not believing that Christ is good enough. It's like they're falling into sin and temptation and calling it grace and being like, well, I'm just a sinner, so... It's just what I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to end up cheating on my wife. I'm just going to end up, you know, yelling at my boss. I'm just going to end up, you know, cheating on my taxes. It's just what you do. It's just trying to get an upper hand in life, you know, like I'm just a sinner. I'm just going to fall. Like you do not understand what he did for you. You're denying that Jesus is the Christ. You're denying the truth that is in you. That has set you free from all those things. I'm, I'm talking to myself too. Because that grace, that grace is not the real grace. It's like a baser side of grace. It's not. That's like a greasy grace that's like, oh, Romans talks about, shall I sin now that, that, that grace may abound? It's like, God forbid you do that. You've been set free. Why would you go back to that? Why would you preach that Christ allows you to live in unbelief? That he set you free from these things. It's like ridiculously doesn't make sense. So anyway. And uh, talking about the love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Jesus talks about how you are in the world now. But you are not of the world. I didn't come to take you out of the world. But to leave you in it. So if any man love the world. The love of the father is not in him. He talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's the world. And this world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. And he talks a lot about forever in this. I love it. The desire to have nice clothes, the desire to be approved by men, the desire to have that nice car, the desire to have your act together and look like you are keeping up with the Jones like that stuff will fade and fall away and the lust of it I tell you you seek the kingdom you seek God with all your heart you your desire like that as that passes away before you have to have it passed away that gets mortified before you need to get mortified if you, if you get what I'm saying so you're in the world this world is ours to transform it, 
to have it pass away into what it's originally meant to be about. Not fighting to get your upper hand, not, not stepping over people to give yourself a name in the world. Hoard up, store up like this is about love, knowing God. The Bible says it's my favorite thing to know and keep myself focused. This is eternal life. To know Him. To know you, God. That's the purpose of my eternal life, to know you. Come on. Oh, and it ended with talking about abiding in Christ. Let this all abide in you. Oh, man. And I encourage you, the Spirit of Truth, if you have not received the Holy Spirit and the ability to speak with tongues, it's yours. Ask Him. Ask Him right now. God, I want to know you. I want this Holy Spirit of Truth. Come into my life and open your mouth and have faith and just speak. He will open your mouth and the words will form and He will pray for you what you need. And He's going to guide you and build you up into all truth. This anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie. You can't talk of anything but of what God tells Him. He cannot tell you anything false or lead you in the wrong place. And even as it, it has taught you, you shall abide in Him. Let's And I'll finish. Now little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of Him. This is a, can be a controversial topic of when He shall appear. We can have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Whatever your beliefs are about Jesus coming, let me inspire you to keep focus on the one thing. If we're waiting, we don't know the time that He might return, why not just live as if he, today's the day? Why not be living as if, you know what? What if this verse means, when he shall appear, when Jesus shall appear, does Jesus live in you now? If you want him to, he will. Jesus lives in me now. His life, his spirit is a part of me. And now, do you want to know how he's going to appear? Through me. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why don't I say the same thing? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you see me, you've seen Jesus. He's just going to point you to the Father. So when Jesus shall appear in me, we can have confidence and not be shamed at his coming. How is he going to appear? It's only going to be in righteousness. So when I go over and I ask the woman that's limping on the side of the road, can I pray for you? Jesus shall appear. And I'm definitely not ashamed for bringing glory and honor to his name. Because he that is righteous knows that everyone that does righteousness is born, is born of him. She's going to say, who are you? My friend says she was in a clinic. And uh, there's a lot of terminal patients there. And she finally got the boldness of the Lord to pray for one lady. And she's pleased. And she prayed and that woman was so overwhelmed with the love of God. She said, you're like an angel. That's all she could equate her to is you're an angel. And she's getting better. And I believe Jesus appeared in my friend. And now she has confidence and she's not ashamed of him. Jesus, do you want to return one day? You or 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 is this how you're returning either way? Man, let's make him appear. The manifested sons and daughters of God. Wow. We're almost at 30 minutes. This is for me and the Lord. If you get in on it, like, great. But I inspire you. Get in the word. You know what? Maybe we'll do this in chapter 3 tomorrow. But sometimes I just get it. And I'll just pray with the Lord and talk to him. And, and confess, declare these things in a in a first person of what he's saying about me like I don't love the world or the things in this world but I um, therefore the love of the Father is in me I mean looking at verse 15 for all that's in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father thank you Lord that you've done away with these things the day I found you the lust of the flesh and the eyes and the pride. Thank you. It's been dealt with. It's been done. You cursed it on the tree for me. Therefore, your will, your will in me, Lord, abides forever. Your love, your desire to know you abides forever. And I'm going to preach that and show that to the world. 
Thank you for opportunities today. Whether I'm all alone with you, you bring people on our hearts to bless, to pray for. You bring people in our dreams to bless, to pray for. If you feel like that you're, um, you're being reminded of an old friend, I believe God's speaking to you. Utilize that. Pray for them. Maybe reach out to them. It could make their day. Maybe they're going through something and all of a sudden you have a dream about somebody you hadn't talked to for 20 years. Hey, let's not just believe, oh, whatever, it's just strange. I don't believe anything's a coincidence now that you're alive in the spirit and you recognize deja vu is not real deja vu, I think. It's really us tapping into the spirit. We're getting glimpses of what we're really able to walk and live in. So exciting. Love, love, love. Thank you, Lord. I bless you guys. Thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's it 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 remains and that we're good ground and that we, we grow from here. We flourish from here. Thank you, Lord, that my own friends that are out there and that I don't know and that I know, that they get in to you themselves as well they dig in they hear from you they learn from you it's not even about the perfect doctrine or teaching it's about fellowship with you and I pray that my friends and I we have this and what what truth we believe with you God in that place whatever faith we built up to we walk in it amen